fourth graders, we got another project for you. It's going to be a still life. A still life. I'm going to start it off by showing you some still life paintings from some artists to get you an idea of what other artists have done and what you're about to do. So let's take a look. All right, this first one, well, actually, it's going to be uh, the first two. It's by an artist named Jean-Baptiste Simeon Chardin. Oh, he's French, all right. All of the still lifes, it's almost as if you're looking from slightly above. There's a silver goblet, and you can see inside of it. Like, you can see the rim of the whole thing. What you want to start out with is, you know, what still life do you want to do? What do you want to place in it? Uh, a lot of these still lives are things that you find laying around, uh, fruit, things like that of varying degrees of decay. Some are new, some are a little older, some are a little rotted too. Uh, and sometimes you throw in uh, an extra object that doesn't even make sense. It's really neat to do sometimes. This one right here, this is Vincent Van Gogh now. We're going to look at a couple from Vincent Van Gogh. Again, top down, you could see the tops of all of the containers, the jug in the back, the cups, the pitcher. It's like you're looking down on it. It makes for a more visually interesting drawing or painting when you're looking down on it because you have like more of a ability to make things look three dimensional. You could see inside the dish, you could see inside the bowl uh, or the saucer that the teacup's in. Look at that color though too. It's like yellows, oranges, blues, you know, blue and orange are, are opposite colors, so they really like to bounce off of each other and, and, and kind of glow. Again, top down, you can see inside the cup. Uh, not only does he have the fruit in the cup and the uh, container with the flowers, but he has a little branch of flowers on the bottom just laying there with a little, little bit of a little bit touch of a shadow underneath it too. So you want to like have a really good arrangement. This is Paul Cezanne. Cezanne's really uh, well known for his still lifes, especially his fruits. And these are going to be three paintings by Cezanne. And I'm just going to flip through them. This is the first one. Here's the second one. And here's the third one. Now you can go back to take a look if you want, but the containers are the same in all three of those. He just keeps repeating those containers. That's the cool thing about still life. You, you can range everything out, and then you look for your best possible angle. So Cezanne was like painting different angles of his arrangements, playing with the uh, light and the shadow. He's playing around with the colors, and you could just keep using the same objects over and over again. But when it comes to like the objects and the arrangements, you can make it personal. You, you can use objects that mean something to you or have sort of a theme also if you wanted to. It can have like a theme. Light source, arrangement, colors if you have color, uh, or at least the light and dark values of gray tones in there if you're, if you're not doing it in color. Um, and that top down look is really important too because all those things combined can set a mood. It could, and, and Cezanne's paintings set a very calming sort of homely mood okay so those are the paintings I want to show you and now we're gonna swing over to actually making a still life and I've arranged a couple of pieces and we'll talk about it and we'll get started okay so this is gonna be my little setup and I can't show you the still life because the cat is now standing directly on top of the thing that I made but at least you can see where my pad of paper is on my easel. I got a little thing here for my eraser and pencils, a little cup for pencil shavings, and there's a cat. Could you move? Please. Give me one second. I have a light coming from over here. There's the cat playing with the eraser. He likes my erasers. So that light is directional. It's hitting one side, so I have a nice bright area here dark on this side and it's a nice top-down view so I could see the top of the cup I could see inside the little mini pitcher right there right in the uh, the saw so uh, the dish right there the little saucer for the cup and nice little shadow going across there really good lights and darks that's exactly what I want 
I have two pencils here. You can use a regular pencil, but if you have uh, different types of pencils, some that are lighter and some that are darker, I'm gonna go with this HB pencil because it's lighter. What are you doing? And I, I'm gonna have this darker pencil from, it's a 6B. Higher the number, the darker the pencil is gonna be. And I can't start because the cat is in front of the still life. Cat. The cat is now moving my still life. Don't do that. You move my still life. This is a problem. Okay, to start this out, I wanna get a general overview of everything uh, with a very light pencil. I'm gonna use the light pencil here. I have a dark one. Uh, if you have only one pencil, just don't press very hard and you'll be okay. So I want to get the layout of where everything is sitting. It's sitting on this square table. And what I'm doing is I'm just sketching, fleshing it out. I'm not going to draw one straight line all over the place. I'm finding the line. So if I make a mistake like I did here, I just kept going out until I found where I think it was correct. And this will be my back point here. And this will be my back point here. I'm not going to do the entire line because I have all the objects there. All right, so now I'm just going to generally place things. So if I'm looking at it sort of in the center of it, which would be about here, I have part of the saucer. So my little piece of garlic is right around here. My saucer is somewhere around here and these are all I'm just generally finding everything I'm not doing anything specific so far the onion isn't along the same line as the bottom of the garlic it's pushed up a bit so if I go over this way and then go up my onion is somewhere around here crosses over my saucer See how I just kept making the shape until I figured, like, all right, that's that's good enough for me. This is the little knot right there. This is going above the back end of that table there. I may have to adjust where my table is because I don't like how my saucer is sitting here. I might actually extend my table out until I get it right. And I don't like where this is either. It's actually more on an angle over here. I'm leaving the mistake. I just want to do all this stuff till I get it right. Because, you know, I'll, I'll use an eraser. It's okay. All right, that's sort of oniony right there. And behind the onion, there's a little container back there. Let's see here. Got the little lip there. Got that part. Uh, this is a little bulgy thing up here containers over here comes in and all this is observing I'm just observing uh, artists like to say uh, things like I'm fleshing it out I'm just getting just getting started I'm just fleshing out the whole sketch and now I'm gonna go back I feel like my table actually extends out a little more so that's what I'm gonna do. And I don't think I like the angle of it either. So I'm gonna bring it in so it touches here instead. Um, I see a little bit of back here. And I'm gonna change the size of my plate too. I don't like the size of my plate anymore. So I'm probably gonna change that into something a bit bigger. It's really good for you to, to watch somebody else as they're working, how they deal with their problems, uh, how they correct things as they go along. Oh yeah, I'm a little more satisfied with what I have over there. I think I like the spacing a bit more. Although, the table's a little longer. I was able to make a line because I'm using that. I cheated, I used that to make it straight. That was nice. Uh, and then my piece of garlic. I think I'm good with the size of the piece of garlic. All right, let me get my 
my cup in there, the bottom of the cup. Here come the sides. Start getting the opening. And I mean, guys, it takes practice. All right, never get discouraged. Just keep working, keep messing with it, keep playing. And there's that part right there. So I have my my general scene down. Although I'm not too happy about this bottle right now because when I look at the cup and if I make an imaginary diagonal line, it should be going like this. It should be up more here. So I think my picture should be about yay high instead. Let me take a look at that. Yeah, somewhere around there. I think I want my picture to be about that big. And in relation to the opening of my cup, the opening of my bottle should be a lot smaller than this opening right here. So if my opening is that big, the opening of this cannot be that wide. It's got to be a little smaller than that. Maybe a little wider too. Put the little lip right here. And then the neck of the bottle. And then it flares out and down. I don't know if you notice, I'm pushing a little bit harder because I think I'm a little more confident about where it's supposed to be. And the handle could go right here like that and that's how I would sketch it out that's a sketch uh, it's messy there's lines all over the place it doesn't matter I've got one of these I can erase everything out and that's how I would start a still life I would start it by a nice light sketch putting everything where they're supposed to be I can even now add in the little um, there's these little folds here and just so you know that the, the white covering on that little table, that's a t-shirt. You make do with what you have. It's, it's, it's nice and bright. I never wore it before. I was probably going to put some fabric paint on it and do something to it. Uh, so now it's good for a still life. It's perfect. Uh, let's see here. A little flap over here. And I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with that sketch right there. Um, okay, so let's talk about uh, what I used and why I used it. So now that we got the sketch down, um, what I have here is teacup with the saucer, a piece of garlic, an onion, and that blue vase looking pitcher thing right there. And then there's my t-shirt covering around the whole thing. And if I sketch this out, the more I do it, I'm probably going to add some of those wrinkles in there too that you see. The little lines every every once in a while. So the teacup is actually uh, something that belonged to my grandparents. And I have their, their dish set. It's like a set of all these dishes and cups and things. And it means a lot to me because uh, they passed away a while ago and uh, spent a lot of time with them. They're wonderful people. So it, it, I decided to use that because it meant something to me. And this blue one here, I put the, the blue one there because of its color. I just like the color of it. And it's got some really interesting dark happening around the rim there. And I love that white little glisten right there. It's gonna look really good when I draw it out. Um, the onion and the garlic, I had nothing else. I had no fruit in the house. That's all I've been eaten. Uh, I've been using onions and garlic in a, in a soup that I've been making. So I got these cool little uh, root things coming out. Uh, there's little nice little like onion veins running through there with little dark spots. And the onion, I thought it was great because it, it has that kind of white sort of surface so you can get like nice lights and darks out of it. So that's why I chose what I chose. I, I chose it because it meant something to me. It's got color. I had nothing else, and the surfaces look really good. So it works for me. You can use anything for a still life. Uh, traditionally, you would use like 
uh, kitchen things and fruit and things like that. Flowers is another good thing for a still life. Uh, so yeah, so that's why I chose the things that I chose. I'm going to be as basic as possible. I'm going to do this as basic as possible. And I'm going to start with one object. I think I'll start with the bottle right here and show you how I'll shade it. And then you can use that with everything else in here. I have my darker pencil right now. And I, before I drew a little darker because I really got a little more sure of myself with the lines. Although I believe that when I created the neck, this neck is a little bit too long. It should have stopped here on both sides. Neck isn't as long as I gave it credit for. So it should stop around here instead. Maybe even up a little higher than that, but I think I'm satisfied with this right here. Um, and as for the eraser, uh, I'm not going to touch it yet. What I'm going to do is take the darker pencil and start finding all of my darks. You, you, you know, when you do these things, you want to find your, your really bright, bright brights and your dark darks. And the darkest area that I could see is that cool rim area going around. Although I will say that there is a, a nice glint of light on here too. So I may go in there with an eraser later on and work on that a bit. So there's my there's my rim right there. Uh, inside the handle here, which is right around here-ish, uh, there's a dark spot. I see a dark spot in here. Oh, by the way, the picture that you're looking at is different from what I'm looking at right now because the only way that I can draw this is to have light shining on this which is affecting my still life. The picture that you're looking at it, the light that's touching this is off. So you have more dramatic shadows in there. So it might look a little different than what you're looking at in the picture. I know that's dark here. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Uh, I see a little bit of dark, just a little bit of dark in here for what I'm looking at. And it tends to get, even though it's lighter on this side, I'm seeing a little bit of dark, probably because of the thickness of the glass. The light's going through it and brightening up that side a bit more. So there's my start right there. I'm a big, big user of rubbing and smearing things with my fingers. I just like working into it. I really like pastels and charcoal because you could just basically draw with your fingers. I like getting in there. I, I, having a tool, I'm not, I'm not great with using, well, it's not that I'm not great with using tools. My preference is, is I don't want a tool between me and the paper. I want my, I want to be feeling the paper and making the things. I don't want anything in the way. Uh, so this is a means of going in and touching everything. That's that's how I like to uh, to do this artwork is, okay, I'll get all the pencil down and now I'm gonna rub it all over the place. Even right now, I just wanna start attacking it. I'm trying not to. So I'm gonna put a little bit of shading in here, wherever I see, and I'm not pushing hard, it's very light. And I'm going around the areas that I, I see that it's really, really bright. And I see a really bright, uh, nice bright spot inside of here. Okay, and then the handle here. Let's see if I can find anything on that. Okay, that's a good start right there. It's time for the eraser. I'm going to start taking out stuff around the edges so I could see it a bit better because there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of things that might draw my eye away from something that I really want to fix. And I get all that sketching out of the way. This is where I start to use my fingers. I, I go right in, I love this part. I just go in and start working on it. I, I changed fingers really quick there. I went from my pointer finger to my pinky because I went into a smaller area. 
I just do it naturally now because I do it so much. Okay, now, good so far. All this artwork you do, you do it in layers though. You want everything done in layers. I'm using an eraser to highlight any bright spots and I'll just keep working over those areas until I feel like I got it right. All right, so let's see, get my dark pencil here and I'm gonna make my darker areas even darker now. That weird area in here, that's pretty good. And a little bit on the outside. That might have went a little bit too dark right there. That's okay. I've got an eraser. It's all going to be okay. So I'm just studying it, observing it, and trying to hit those spots that I think are darker. And I'm not going to do a, a super, super finished piece. It's way, way too long to do that. That'd be a really long video. Start working up here now. I'm just going to do the general stuff. Okay, there you go. It's, it's really starting to, to kick in now. And I'm going to add a bit more pencil in there. So I could start working again with my finger in there. Um, sad news is I lost my gummy eraser. I think my cat might have used it as a toy. I really like using that in my artwork. And I can't find it. It might be under a cabinet or something. I'm going to start looking around for that. Uh, but I could use that and make it really, really thin because it's gooey. And there's these nice little highlights around the back that I could use with that. Also, if you have a white charcoal pencil, if you happen to have one, that's really good to add in whites also. Um, I have one. I'm trying not to use one because I'm trying to figure like most of you guys probably wouldn't have one. I'm going in again and I'm highlighting things with this. I think I'm going to try to highlight a little bit in here with the corner of the eraser. It's hard to do. It's really tough to do with this one. Yeah, it'd be much better if I had the uh, the gummy eraser. All right, actually, I'll just go with my finger here. A little darker here. I want that nice contrast. I'm going to be a little more careful around here. I kind of like scribbled a bit in there to get that idea that there's like little light sources in there. Because I can't make every single one. I mean, I could, but again, it would take a long time. And this video is already starting to get a little bit long. All right, so there's my first vase right there. I could keep working that, keep working that. Um, I'll start with the onion next, go to the cup, the garlic, and just go all the way around this thing to do the still life. The most important part is that is that first drawing, that first sketch to get everything down where you want everything to be. It's a very messy drawing. You have to do it very lightly. And then you go in with other pencils and you start working into it. That's That's basically how you do it. So I'm going to keep working on this for a little while and uh, come back. I just kind of shaded out a shadow right here. Yeah, you see that? Oh, come on. <laughs> um, so I'm going to lightly go over it with the pencil that you probably can't see because of this animal. That's the right animal. Uh, and then there's a deeper shade going down here. Uh, this is the uh, the wall right here and this is the shadow cast onto the wall again with the garlic oh my goodness um, they have like these little um, lines going through here I could probably give some hints of that here and there 
uh, shade that out. Uh, I don't have it. This line right here is where it drops, so I, it's hard for me to get my pencil in there. Um, but yeah, pr pretty much this is this is it. Um, if I finish up this this shadow over here, I got cast onto the wall and work some of the shadow here on the wall here. And so the teacup, the flowers aren't exact. Uh, let's see what time it is real quick. So this took me about 30, 30 35 minutes or so. Um, like I said, it's, it's for me, it's, it's a quick sketch. It's not a complete picture, but it gives you an idea of, of what you can do. So all the things I used for this, I used for everything else. The only thing that I didn't get to do on this is cast these shadows on the bottom. And like I told um, some of the other kids, you, you want to work with this sort of idea. You want to make this side as dark as possible and as light as possible. I wouldn't do this on here unless it's like a practice piece and you're just learning. But I want to be able to see this in my still life somewhere. And I could definitely see that darkness in certain spots in my shades down in here, right? And I want to see this entire range. I want to see these mid-tones in different places, right? Where the where the light kind of like goes through these two objects and kind of casts on that cup right there. So I could keep going with this, darken the shadows, play with it a little bit more. I'm not satisfied with the with the shadow that's being cast inside the cup. I could probably work that out better. Um, I'm kind of cool with what's going on in the saucer here. I like the contrast between this and this. That looks pretty good too. So yeah, still life. Uh, you want to use a range of of tones, dark to light. You want to see the dark. This dark right there is in this spot here, is in this spot here. I see it over here in this spot. Uh, there's a little bit right there. Uh, my brightest brights. There's definitely like the really highlighted areas are in these spots here. A little bit in here too. Um, so when you make your still life, what you're doing. For right now, you're just practicing. Get a group of things that are interesting to you that, that can cast really nice shadows and show that range. Um, this object here doesn't show the same type of range as a white teep cup would. You can see a lot more shadows and things going on here. This is a little more difficult. All right, so maybe you wanna go with things that are a little more uh, bright that give you, gives you your highlights. So I'd like to see some of you do some still lifes. I'd love to see what you're working with. And when you send it to me, if you have questions, uh, email me your, or your questions or uh, put it on Google Classroom, ask questions right on Google Classroom and be like, Mr. D, what do you think of this? Do you think I can improvement? And I could give you some feedback on it. Um, I already had a student fifth grade send a still life to me. And I actually took it and I resketched it and I sent the picture back to the student with little notes on the paper saying, did you see what I did right here? I cast a deeper shadow on this side. It makes it pop out more, right? Um, watch out for your light source, where your light's coming in. Make sure your darks are all on one side. So uh, yeah, if you're really interested in this stuff and you wanna make a good still life, do it. Send me the picture or put it on uh, Google Classroom and I will give you some feedback if you'd like. Um, and let me know what kind of feedback you want. If you want me to be really, really specific um, and really, really picky, I could do that. Um, if, if you're just doing it for fun, let me know you're just doing it for fun and just say, hey, what do you think? Um, and I'll give you an honest opinion on it. And uh, yeah, start it up. Let's see what you got. Love to see some still lifes. Uh, for any fifth graders watching, also a good thing to do. You got a month to do it if you want it for the creative arts program. All right, guys, get drawing.